Oh, we'll go ahead and get started and Paul can join us when he's here. So, Thanks for coming. We'll call the meeting to order and start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll start with the approval of the agenda. Any corrections? Dan, you, did you have something? It was just one little typo. In yeah, we've corrected that. Uh, there was a small grammatical error in the cogeneration rules in the consent agenda. Okay. But that actually, the new copy's been uploaded to uh, Dropbox already. Okay. Any additions? No. Nope. No. Right, no. Okay, we've got one here. It says adds AC2 Sullivan evaluation step increased to grade 8, step 7, 31.15 per hour. Um, and that's the utility billing specialist. <clears throat> Has that been reviewed by personnel committee? What's that? The evaluation. Um, I mean, if you'd like to review it, you certainly can. Jessica did a review this year, and then I reviewed her review of her of Cassie. So when we realign those departments. Jessica Royer now reviews the utility billing specialist and the uh, the uh, deputy clerk. Okay, and that comes at your recommendation. Um, it's Jessica Royer's recommendation, but I did add some notes to her um, review. I know they discussed a, a number of items. So okay, all right, we'll add that to it. If there's any more discussion, we do it after we're, we've approved it. So anything else? Okay, I'm entertain a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Thanks, Dan. I have a second. Second. Thank you. you all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the consent agenda. I just have one question on the evaluations. We've had some issues with that department. Sure. I don't want to say individual, but has that been addressed? Because it's, it's been a, at length. a major issue, not just a yeah, minor issue. Um, so one thing you'll notice here at City Hall that we have uh, sort of changed up that front office. If you take a look, you can see the... Um, the front conference room has actually been changed into a utility billing office, and we do think that that's going to provide a, a little bit better focus for Cassie when it comes down to the, the actual utility billing. Um, so that's one thing that we've done is to, to make sure that she has the space and the focus she needs to be more effective. So I know from, from my perspective, I think from the staff's perspective here at City Hall, we think that's going to be very helpful to, uh, to everyone here. Um, you know, one of the things that I know that we've discussed, and she's going to be continuing to do some additional um, customer service training online this year. So we've identified a program for her. Last year we did the whole staff, um, which is not a bad thing, but it also is a little bit unwieldy to have all the staff do it every year. Where we do have some spots where we're going to focus for specific employees, it's a little easier to have them do additional training. Um, so I know when Jessica went through and, and did a review, she weighed the different components of the job and the different scoring and said that, on average, it was a satisfactory review. There are two categories in particular that need improvement, and then a couple of categories where she's, you know, above average as an employee. So, okay, just to make sure those were. No, I mean, I, I you know that's been a point of discussion we've had before with council, and I definitely appreciate that. So, okay. all right. Any other questions for staff on the consent? <coughs> okay. Entertain a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have a second? Thanks, Ryan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. No visitors. Um, Mayor's report, uh, I'd like to appoint Brandon Buckingham to the Planning Commission. His application was in the packet, I believe. Are there any questions on that? I would think it's a pretty thorough okay. application. And we will, that will fulfill our, our number for the Planning and Zoning Board. So yep. we'll be at our, our number, which is great. We had a new <coughs> member add uh, last meeting and the topic might have been a little bit more intensive than he had wanted. It was a lot of content for Mr. Hansen uh, for his first meeting, but I think that overall uh, it's going to be a good process to have some new members too who bring a different perspective as well, which is great. Good. Thank you. Um, I'll, entertain a motion, or I'll entertain a motion to approve that. Thanks, Mel. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Dan. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. No public forum cards. Um, committee report, Planning Commission, Marty Electric Variants, and we do have a resolution for that. So is there an update from Planning Commission on that? 
Sure, I can preface it, and then um, you know any of the members from planning, <coughs> planning and zoning can can do that. Paul's not here tonight, so um, basically what we have is a relatively straightforward project, and Mr. Marty's here tonight as well. If he'd like to address it, he certainly have that opportunity. You've got the um, the RCA there. Um, we have a building expansion um, in a, a, a building that for all intents and purposes is limited on the use of the space they have because of a sewer easement on the north side of the property. So after review, the uh, Planning Commission felt that, um, that it did meet the you know, qualifications and criteria for a variance because of the limitations on the site that were out of the control of the owner. <coughs> and so uh, you can see the statements of fact there and the statements of findings that the uh, uh, Planning and Zoning is recommending the approval for that variance of space. Okay. Let Paul settle in here for a second. Sounds good. <clears throat> you stuck behind the train? Stuck in my driveway. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's so good. That's worse than the train. So we're just to the uh, just planning commission recommendation variance so, from the yes, variance okay. from that. So yep, I remember that. Um, so we got an update on that. Did, just off top of it, Tim, you get logged in there. Was there anything you wanted to add for the council? No, as far as recommendation. Okay. All right. Any questions on that? Appreciate planning commission's work on that to make sure it fits with what we need to do. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Uh, the resolution approving the variance for 701 Third Street Southeast. Make the motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Anything you want to add? I mean, I mean, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. You going to walk across country or are you going to, did you, you drive? You buy snowshoes, right? I drove. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I would have drove. I'm going to go try getting stuck on the way back. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. EDA number two. Uh, the Democrats at the sure mid so review yeah we're doing a mid-cycle review just uh, so you're aware of that um, some really interesting information and part of it was what the uh, planning and zoning kind of reviewed um, we, we completed the comprehensive plan in 2017 at least the city did I wasn't here but that was when it was um, done and so there have been a lot of things shifting since then the housing market's been strong the land usage has increased so this was really interesting for us to take a look at some of the data in here we agree with and some of it we don't. Um, some of the stuff seems a little strange, but unfortunately part of it's also skewed with uh, the COVID, you know, with the uh, working from home and things like that. So the interesting part to me specifically is you can see that population trend, um, which goes from 1970 where the population of Casson was, you know, just short of 1,900 people mm -hmm. to today, you know, we expect, you know, we're, we're, the state democracy does we're about 7,100. So, I mean, it's obviously we're over tripling in size in, in a 40-year period or 50-year period. So continued growth. You can see some of the comparables, too, for other cities in our area. So basically, this is information that lets you know that the EDA and the planning and zoning are going to be taking a look at this, doing some updates to our demographics, and then hopefully having some uh, basically adds to the, to the comp plan. In particular, we're trying to identify uh, land use planning and kind of an updated roadmap for where we want things to go. Partly it comes from the conversation we've had about the EDA in particular about the land on the southwest side of town and growth on the south side of, of Casson. We know that the growth on the north side is mostly trended towards residential, probably will continue to do so. Commercial development is something that we're concerned about wanting to make sure that's a, that's a viable thing. So anyway, that's what it is. That's what's going on. And uh, just wanted to let you know uh, we're going to run it past the probably the uh, the chamber too and see if they have any feedback as well to try and get their kind of thoughts on things too. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay. On to the ED of the facade improvement grant. That is in your packet as well. We have still trying to open. Okay, for Chaotic Good Brewing and Tammy's Place, they're both in there. Are there any questions on that? They were both uh, reviewed by EDA and the recommendation is they fit the, the criteria for the application and the funds are available in the program. So, any questions from anybody? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have a second? Thanks, Mel. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I just do have one note on that too, yep. though. Is with Tammy's place, 
one thing we do want to look at in the future is that that whole uh, overhang. I mean, you can see on the in some of the pictures there. There's it's it's in not in great shape already. So I know the overhangs on Main Street. You know they help keep the snow off, but they aren't always the most attractive either. So that's something we're going to try and help them with. If over time that might be something we can get kind of changed a little bit. But they but don't. They don't. For they don't. the time being, they don't own the you know they don't own the third building there. So right. It's kind of hard for them to. To, to deal with it, but yeah. just a heads up, that is something that we're cognizant of. Yeah. You know, we're approving a sign that may, you know, it may shift after if we could get that facade off. We would try and do that. I think. We've been trying to ask Mr. Brown when he owned all of them for years right. to consider doing something too, and he wasn't interested. So, right. but now that it's chopped up with three different owners, it's a little tougher. <laughs> Keep working on it. That's right. Okay, on to Park Board. Julia Christensen. So there's a recommendation to hire Julia Christensen as the CAS and Aquatic Center Manager. That's right. Anything else you'd like to add with that? Um, there are two items, actually, and Ryan, you could speak to those, too, as well. Last night, the, um, there was a presentation from a young man, Patrick Trahey, I think his name is. He is uh, Eagle Scout. His Eagle project this year, he is doing some um, bike repair stations, I think two bike repair stations, one for uh, Lions Park and one in uh, Veterans Memorial Park. So the uh, planning, uh, Park and Rec did make, make a recommendation to approve that. The cost to the city will be quite limited. It'll mostly be labor time to try and help them with that. Not in terms of putting this stuff together, but uh, we're going to probably pour the concrete slab. Uh, Greg Kubal has donated the concrete for it, so which is which is great. So there will be a little bit of time, but they are they are recommending that the council would accept that project and allow for that project to take place. Um, there is also another item, uh, Janet Sinning and her group. Uh, would like to install, and I wasn't here for that part of the meeting, so maybe you can speak to it, Ryan. Yeah. Um, I wasn't here for that part of the meeting, but they are uh, asking to install a historical sign along the wall in Veterans Park. It's sort of a, I think, kind of a plaque style, maybe, Ryan. You yeah, she had uh, a little demo of it on the table. Um, it'll have pictures, some verbiage, some paragraph stuff, and then it will all be paid for through the, um, i trying to think of their the right I think that's what it's from. None of it will come from city funds. They'll have two posts in the ground. They're not going to, they'll concrete the member. They won't do a slab underneath because that way if they need to change its direction, they can. Don't have to worry about the concrete. Are they talking about like the slightly flat signs like they have in some places in Manorville where there's a lot yep. of Yeah, so then you can look at it and read it, yeah. My only question is, um, will they be strong enough to support the weight of three or four children sitting on them? Because <laughs> you know what's going to happen. Yeah. That would be a good question to ask at our next park board meeting. And who who would be installing it? I believe our city staff would be. And that's probably good to make sure that it goes in like it should and where. Because yeah. that way it gets located proper. It goes where we want it. And gets Mr. Langan said he would be doing that. Okay. And it probably will be secure enough. <laughs> I don't think we have any kids that would climb on it, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or adults. Well, so those were the those were the three <laughs> items. And just I know okay. um, there might be a question, Dan. Sometimes you ask about it. Julia Christensen. Her the wage for her would be twenty fifty. That's the wage that would be for her. Um, the other thing that the park board did was they set wages last night. We'll have those for council at the next meeting probably. Okay. Is is she just a one year? Do you know? I'm anticipating that might be a couple years. She okay. is, uh, I think she's maybe 17 or 18. No, she's got to be 20. Oh, she's in she's college. In college yeah. But, but I'm, I think they're hoping to get at least two years out okay. there. But we, you know, it is what yeah. it is. So. Sure. And we did choose four assistant managers yesterday as well. They, they had eight interview and chose four. Perfect. Thank you. So should we tackle all three of those separately? Probably. Uh, yeah, I would say the Julia is probably a separate one, and then if you wanted to do the park signage and the bike, you could do one motion for those two. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the hiring of Julia Christensen as the Cast and Aquatic Center Manager. <coughs> Thanks, Mel. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, Ryan. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then we'll have one motion. I'll um, entertain a motion to approve the installation of the bike repair center stations. stations and the uh, signage at the historic wall at Veterans Memorial Park. Make the motion. Thanks, Ryan. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. Thanks for the update, Ryan. 
Um, old business tobacco ordinance examples. So there's a, some examples. I think there's three different drafts of different things. And like Tim had said before, we were talking before the meeting that you know, none of them have been checked for grammar or spelling, but they're just three drafts to be taken a look at. Anything you want to add on those three? I mean, well, kind of like I was telling uh, Council uh, Member uh, Ferris. I mean, there's there's sort of three levels. There's the a little bit more intensive. The one version comes from the uh, um, sort of the state's T21, you know, anti-smoking group, which is a little bit more in-depth, and it has some good notes on there for why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, one of the other ones is from a city in our area that recently passed it after the T21 change back in, uh, I think, 2019 or something like that. And the third one is actually kind of a, is a, it's a more of an abbreviated version. You know, I'm looking for feedback on how in-depth you want us to get, you know, how, how high-end do you want us to get. Um, and then once I know that, then we can use any of these as a model to, to amend it for us. Okay. So really just, uh, I'd like to finalize this probably in the next two, two months. I would hope to get that done so we're done at the end, you know, before the, the midpoint of the year. So if you've got feedback for me, let me know. You can read through them and stuff like that. But all of them would have different levels of, of, of criteria and stuff, so. Okay. Thank you. Any questions at this time? or? Everybody just want to keep going through them, and then next meeting we can just touch back, touch back, review that. I kind of like the third one that's in here, <laughs> it, and I know it's it's verbose, but it does give a lot of these are the definitions of the things that we're talking about, so that it's it's extremely clear. Which anytime you're limiting someone's ability to sell or buy something, that's awfully good to have very explicit definitions and laws. So there's not such a gray area? Correct. Good. Just that would be the ordinance from Wanamingo? The 194? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. On to H1, the Jake Break Ordinance Discussion. So uh, actually this is Mr. Marty's uh, complaint. <laughs> So he took off already, but I include this as a memo, um, mostly informational uh, to, it's actually from our police chief. Um, Mr. Marty emailed me with a complaint about uh, Drake, Jake breaking noise uh, that he's seen increase recently or he's felt that it's increased recently. So I, I did ask our police chief to, uh, to review that and this is his response. So it, um, you know, certainly any action the council chooses to take is, is up to you. Um, I think that enforcement is probably the largest issue and I think that um, Chief Hansen notes that, it, you know, you have to kind of catch them and more often than not you see where they may have a legitimate reason for Jake breaking, I don't know. Um, so, but it's in your hands and, and up to the council if they want to take any action or not on it. I mean, certainly if you've got any feedback, um, that'd be helpful too. Uh, Brandon? No, not necessarily. I mean, we come up in communities, but it's, it goes back to, I think, the police chief referenced the enforcement of it mm -hmm. is lazy in the force, so. You could put, if you can put signs up, that'd be great. But even if, if you have signs. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, I get it. If you're, I mean, he lives right yeah. there. They're the ones who are going to hear it. Yes. And it is a pain when you hear that. Mm -hmm. You hear it all the way, you know, into town. If it's quiet at night, especially, yeah. yeah. No? You hear it. I mean, I wish maybe but I'm hearing it more now than I used to since it's been brought up. But oh. you do hear it. I mean, it's like a weird complaint when the trains are much louder. I see. You hear the trains coming the trains into are town. Less frequent. <laughs> yes. Are they? The only time I've ever he hear it is just during the fair, during the truck show. Oh, you know, nonstop. Well, but that's that's not going to stop. No, no. But I mean. <laughs> 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 but I'm just saying that's the only thing. We're fighting a war. We aren't going to win there. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, trucks are in town. But most people will come to expect that's going to happen then. But I mean, but usually I've never, I don't hear them coming on the highway. But I need I reference La Sica, and they've got the signs correct. And I mean, and they've they never issued they a force. Yeah. Have they noticed a difference with the signs? I guess so. You know, based off what he says here, they don't have any records of anybody being stopped, so I would suspect that it's probably not changed a lot. But as I said, I mean, you know, if, if and he, he notes it in here too, Josh does, if, you know, if you like to pursue this, we can get an ordinance. It, it's a matter of then we would be able to enforce it if it, if it was something the council wanted to pursue. I'd be curious to know if, if just putting up the signs in Wasika made any difference. 
Sure. And he, he isn't here tonight, so I can certainly have him come and talk about it in our meeting. That's certainly not, I don't think this is a rush. It's a matter of if he's got some more good feedback, we could certainly take that in another meeting. I think I'd be curious, too, if they're coming off Highway 14, if that's enforceable on a trunk highway uh, in your community. Yeah, I don't, that's I don't know. That's the complaints are coming off the off-ramp on uh, off of Highway 14. I'm just technically not our street yet. I don't know. Yeah. And then they're turning on the state highway, too. Yeah, I don't know. If, I'm assuming that that's where the complaints are coming from. Is sure. Coming down the off ramp of Highway 14, I'm not sure if it's. I would imagine. I know that some actually on the north side. I I think I've actually heard that may be a bigger issue on the north side than even off of 14 at times. But Good when people are coming into town from off from Manitou, Manitou, so. not sure. I don't know. I don't I'm I'm probably not the best one to ask me. I live right there in the north. I, I guess it's never. I've never noticed it, but I, maybe I'm immune to yeah, it. It doesn't bother me. And I think we'd be creating an ordinance that is going to be impossible to Unless you were sitting there when they did it. And we don't want to dedicate PD staff time to go sit on the off-ramp to wait for somebody that maybe is going to take back. I mean, I get the complaint. I, I totally can sympathize with that if it's bothering you, but I don't know. How, it, we could spend all the time and make an official ordinance, but it won't get enforced. It just it's not practical to get enforced unless you're right there when they're doing it, and then. But yeah. again, that's my curiosity is just whether or not having the sign. Yeah, if the sign helps, I would have no problem putting a but sign up. It'd be but cheaper than putting up noise walls or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I would be in favor of the signs. I probably wouldn't be in favor of an ordinance. But the odds of them letting us put signs up. Yeah, I mean, it will, well, I, mean they might, I mean, I think if you contact them, asking, yeah. I mean, they, they might not oppose that. You know, I think you almost would have to have an ordinance to put that up. Sign Otherwise, up. the Jake breaking isn't really breaking the law. Right. If you don't have it, I mean, if there isn't an ordinance, you're not really, you know, breaking it. Mm -hmm. you could ask please, people to be nice. Please don't Jake break. <laughs> yeah, please be considerate. Very don't gentle yeah. sign. You know. We'll tell you, uh, I mean, that traffic engineers have a little different perspective than the. <laughs> Mayor's uh, perspective. Uh, what's that <laughs> sign? Uh, adding signs that are. Oh, I'll, I'll be happy to reach out. No, I. It, I would go as far as say I'm in support of a sign if we can put a sign up, but I'm not really in support of an ordinance behind it because I don't think it's anything we can enforce. We're going to spend a lot of time on public hearings to mm -hmm. create an ordinance that we just aren't going to enforce. I mean, and I hate doing that too. If we're not going to enforce it by having it on there, yeah. I can reach out to Minda and see if that's. What you can we can reach out and ask him. Yeah. And you know what, if Josh is here, we'll ask him for his feedback at another meeting, too. Yeah. So just wanted to get it in your hands, so and see how frequent it really is. Yeah. Would we need Minot's permission on the north end, too? Mm -hmm. It's in their trunk highway, yeah, absolutely. State highway. The other thing I was going to bring up, too, that kind of brought back the north side is with that round water, there may change the dynamic to one where they're breaking. I'm guessing they're going to slow earlier, right? So it probably won't be as big of an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 50 mile an hour, the 50 mile an hour speed zone is going further north, right? Yeah. That's it. The 50 mile an hour speed zone is going further north. Uh, where that changes? Yes, yes, it would be changing up. Yeah. It would be on the north side of the roundabout. Yeah. There won't be any. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get to 50 probably. Well, never say never. Right? <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> 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 I think it's possible, Brad. <laughs> Mm. Now. That's another discussion. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, number two, local options, uh, sales tax. So this is just informational. Um, uh, Councilmember Johnson had asked, and I know we had discussed it at a previous uh, after a previous meeting. You know, Nancy had talked a little bit about it too. She had done some research a couple of years ago on the um, what a local option sales tax could generate. So I just have included that in your packet to, for you to be able to see tonight, and you can take a look. And um, I think that these numbers are from 2020, so I would I would imagine that they're on the low end. So she's estimating, or the the state's estimating, that a, a, a half percent sales tax would generate $200,000 a year, or one percent would be 400. With the increased on online sales and the, the increased capture of those online sales, I think this is probably on the low end of that. But um, just so it's it's information to you, um, I don't know if, if Councilmember Johnson had anything you wanted to highlight on that. I know you had you kind of mentioned it to me as maybe some sort of a property tax replacement, kind of an aspect to fund certain things or something along the lines. Yeah, th I mean this is good information. I I just figure that uh, it'd be nice to kind of take some of the burden off the local taxpayers. So if we're projecting two hundred thousand, you know maybe we can enact sales tax and then make a equivalent $200,000 reduction to our levy and then anything in excess of 200,000 we we appropriate to uh, certain projects right and then you know maybe every few years or whatever we reevaluate 
the sales tax revenue versus property tax revenue and adjust it. Because some of that sales tax is coming from, you know, people coming from out of town. But you will lose, well, businesses you are less likely to come to town if they're going to have, have an extra sales tax because you can drive five miles either way here to buy stuff and not pay the extra sales tax, and people will do that. So it's right. It's, your odds of gaining so, twenty thousand, yeah. So by, there. Byron versus Dodge Center. Byron and Dodge Center neither have a sales tax. But not right. an extra five per, a half a percent. And then Rochester is at a half a percent <coughs> right now. They have quite a actually. I think Rochester quite a bit. I think they're I think at one point two five percent right now. It's higher. Yeah. And it's going to go up because they are requesting an extension to that as well. However, Rochester sees an awful lot of its sales from ex not even remotely local people coming through, which is part of the logic behind having it, whereas I'm not sure here how much that burden, it, it's almost like just moving money from one pot to the other and it's still, still saying people the paying it. I think it's not 100%, but yeah, I get what you're saying, that most of it would be local, but not all of it would be. And then some, honestly, some will go to another town. Some businesses won't come to town. You know, we could lose the potential in property tax and sales from them. Um, from my perspective, I did. we did an institute one in a previous city I worked in in 2016. They voted on it. Um, my, my impression and what I've seen in the past is that typically the state, so this has got a number of steps you have to go through. First, the council would have to vote to pursue it. Then the state legislature has to actually include it as part of a law. And then you have to go to the ballot. And if it doesn't get passed at any of those levels, then it doesn't move forward. And then after it gets passed by voters, it comes back to the, the council again to, to authorize it. Um, typically, the state's looking for particular projects. So as opposed to the property tax levy replacement, what you might look at is if there was a project that was upcoming that you said, hey, we're going to have to raise the levy X amount to fund, you know, aquatic center, for example, or something along those lines, that's what you would be saying in your, in your, 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 your question, you'd say, shall the city authorize a half percent sales tax to fund improvements to the aquatic center. So instead of raising the property tax levy to fund that, if like you normally would, you would substitute that revenue from the sales tax. So if we worded it like that on a ballot, once that funding for the aquatic center is done, does that eliminate sales tax yeah, automatically? There would well, be a time limit on it. Yeah, I mean, typically what it is is either a time limit or an amount. So it would be up to $4 million over 20 years. So that means that Rochester has to have that on the ballot every year to keep Not their sales year. tax going? Well, every, every year. so often. Yep, they've renewed it. Interesting. So actually, they're, they're up right now. So it was a 10-year for them. That's why they are going back to the, to the legislature for a new legislation again, mm -hmm. because they had 10 years, 2014, and that one expired. So they're anticipating in Rochester having that on the ballot again in 24, uh, 2024, okay. if it's approved at the legislature, which it likely will be this year. But, so um, it certainly is something that could be... In, in Blue Earth, we used it for some sewer plant improvements and a small amount for that, for parks, and then actually the biggest focus was on street improvements. So they used that to kind of extend their street improvement projects where they were able to add more funding to that that would have other been, otherwise been borne um, in a different way. What is Rochester way. using it for? A lot of different things. Um, a list. Yeah. They have, I think there's $20 million, and it's kind of all spread out um, through different different things they want to do. It's, it's kind of, for them, I think it's kind of the wants, not the needs. So the needs get paid through by the property tax levy, but they want a splash pad here and they want a splash pad there. And, and it's, they're not bad things. Right. And the voters may vote for it, they may not. That's up to the voters in Rochester. But I think that's kind of what they're using it for. And Fairmont, which was a neighboring city that, that I got to watch their process, uh, they promised everyone everything. They said, oh, we'll get a new ice rink and we'll get a new community center and we'll get a new senior center. And they're going to maybe get a community center. And it's 10 years after the fact that they still haven't gotten it finished. So people have been paying that sales tax for 10 years. It actually hasn't come to fruition because in order to get it passed, it passed, you know, 65% of the vote, but they promised everything to everybody. And after the fact, they were like, well, we don't have money to do any of this stuff, so we can only pick one item. And so that's something we want to be very clear about, too, is you don't want to overpromise in order to get something passed and then say after the fact, well, we really can't do your ice rink or we can't do this. It does... That's something you want to be very clear with, uh, with the voters on, I think. In, in the, I mean, I've thought a lot about this ever since we've had the conversation a while ago, and my thoughts are that I guess the only way I could really support it is if it was something that was going to benefit the people that are paying the sales tax, which a lot of taxpayers, whether 
property tax offset, but more of, hey, if we're going to improve parking or street improvements, people that drive into town to shop get the benefit of a better parking structure downtown, better roads to drive on. The businesses get the benefit of, hey, the parking's been improved, the roads have been improved. Sure. Otherwise, that money would have come from the levy. I mean, so it is a levy reduction, but just a shift, say, we're going to we're going to allocate X amount of dollars to, hey, we need to improve parking <coughs> downtown. That's what I can get behind it. Other than that, right now is probably a bad time to float that to the business owners with this new 0.7% state tax. It's probably for sure going to pass. <coughs> and what's Sorry, that can, you, can you repeat that? The 0.7% uh, payroll tax to fund the Leave Act, the 12 week mandatory Leave Act. Huh. 24, isn't it? You can stack two together, yeah. It's a payroll tax? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And I think the big thing that's got business uh, business nervous is that's 0.7 to start with. There's no cap. So it's an annual deal with a audit, and if they spend more than that, the tax can go well, to whatever. And this, on that, uh, we've just been discussing that work, and that other, the state usually estimates low. It's going right. to be more. Yeah. I mean, so it, it, the, the, just to say, hey, you know, if we're going to all of a sudden, hey, we're thinking about a half percent sales tax, for parking your streets and that, and then people are hearing that the 0.7%, it, it just, the optics may not be the best time to, but I think in the back of our minds though, if that's a way to pay for, as we do a parking, we talked about a parking study downtown, or in, you know, the, the city parking plan, which needs to be addressed as we get more stuff down there. Um, that's how I think, my personal opinion, the how we could approach that. Um, never a big fan of taxes but that's somehow it's got to get paid for so anybody else got any opinions or thoughts I was just wondering Paul were there any projects you were thinking about to use those funds for I might have more ideas after our meeting in March oh right because that's when we're gonna get together and talk about that stuff so yep. maybe we just come back to revisit it then um, the earliest we could possibly even implement something like this is gonna be 2025 though right because it's got to get so on yeah, the ballot actually, for that's 2024 a, that's a question so March 31st is the deadline for Submittals for lost for local option sales tax to the state. So w in that time period, the council would have to, you know, opt to do this. We would have to get a hold of Carla Nelson, or I mean, actually any representative, but likely, likely it would be our representative, Carla Nelson or Dwayne Quam, because they're going to write the bill, and then it would get lumped into all the other requests. I think right now the state has 31 requests out for local option sales tax, and they vary. Hibbing, you know, they're for ice rink, and in the cities it's for something, you know, parks or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, then the state would consider that, they'd approve that, and then the earliest it could go on the ballot would be 2024, that's our next general election. So right, then in 2025, you would start collectible with that year. And usually, what we saw in Blue Earth was it was a ramp up, because you're not going to have perfect compliance from your business owners right away, because mm -hmm. they don't know how it all works. In the fullness of time, it actually was executed pretty well, because it's just a matter of it's a line on their bill. But then you got a collection, you know, all the purchases from Amazon, all the online purchases, those all have to. The state's better at capturing those now than they were 10 years ago. Like for a long time, they weren't getting that revenue. Now they are. Um, and I, th I think the biggest key would be it needs to be for a specific project. You know, one project I see, we know that the Aquatic Center bond is coming off, in, and I don't want to make this meeting longer than it needs to be tonight, because so think about that. But um, the bond is coming off, I think, in 2028 for the original bond when we built the Aquatic Center. And I will say that the way it works with aquatic centers, as soon as you're done paying off one, it's usually time to do an update because your concrete's starting to wear, the structure needs some fixes, things like that. That would be a great project where you could say, okay, you know, it'd be you know, something I think that would be sell very more sellable. It's very visible. To your point, it would also allow us to reduce our debt service that's directly related to the levy. You know, you'd be substituting some of that. And so that's something that I thought of maybe as something to, to consider. So, but otherwise, I, I hear you on, you know, I think you want to be very specific of what you're going to do with it, because otherwise, you tend to have um, people go, "Well, I thought we were going to get this, and you don't end up getting it." So, so Tim, just going back, um, you said March 31st is the deadline. Um, that's for this year's, though, right? We would still be able to do it by sometime next year to get on the 2024 for, yeah, ballot. Potentially in potentially in the the session in in 2023, about 2024. I'd have to be early in the session, yeah. Right. And okay. I don't know, like, I, this legislature, it's hard to know, like, are they going to consider any? local option sales tax this year. Are they just going to say, hey, we got all the ones we're going to do? In the past, it's been, they've been less likely to grant them. This year, with the DFL in control, they seem to be much more open to allowing the cities to do that. So uh, that's a good question. But yeah, you're right. We probably could, we could have it possibly go through the legislative session next year, too. 
for this year, it would have to be by March 31st. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. On to the administrator's report. All right. I think we talked about a few things already here. I will. Uh, I did also attend Council of Government, so you've got that in your packet too, just some updates from the county engineer. Um, somebody was mentioning the roundabout going into Manorville, so I'm sure they'll enjoy that. Um, Juneteenth, I have some questions for Council. Uh, whether you'd like to implement this year, we're not required to. It uh, actually doesn't take effect until 2024. I suspect that I will probably hear from some of the uh, employees regarding that. So something to be keep in the back of your mind. Um, so anyway. It's in the contracts. Now once the state implements it, we will. But there's some bill don't, bill don't go into effect till August 1st, 2023. So technically we won't have to do it till 24. So right. that takes effect August 23. Okay, so I mean, fair enough. I mean, just so if that's you know, my opinion. I mean, that yeah. we had the contract. That that's what's in the contract. That's what's in the contract. Yeah, I mean, okay. Well, I appreciate that because that gives me a good, you know, stance to to give right. back to them if I get any questions for anybody. Uh, let's see here. Local government aid. We're checking that. Obviously, that could have a good impact on on the budget and how we do things next year. Uh, Council of Governments talked about that a little bit. You can see in there, planning zoning will probably get a request from the county about that parcel they're looking to make into a county park. Um, Selco has a, a board position currently that uh, we're not being represented for Dodge County. Um, and actually the representative for Cass in itself is stepping down as well. So if someone's interested in that, uh, let me know. I can, I can uh, see if there's something we want to do there. Um, local option sales tax, we talked about that a little bit. Um, and then I do have a couple other things that have come up here. Just wanted to get, let you know that um, dealing with USDA, we have run into some issues potentially with that working with USDA, so it may be beneficial from a timeline perspective that we look at alternate funding sources. We may end up looking at bonding for that project instead of the USDA. Um, and there'll be more information that we'll have uh, probably at a, a later date on that. So, Other than that, uh, I think I'll take any questions you've got. Okay. Any questions for Tim? Okay. Thanks, Tim. Engineer's report. Uh, thank you. I will stick with one more item uh, underneath the administrator's report, the county engineer's road update. Um, you may see in there County 34, the concrete section is cast on the radar um, to repair some joints in there and grind that surface. Um, and it was mentioned about the council workshop in March. Uh, one of the things that we're going to discuss is potentially painting some bike lanes along 34 to connect our trail at our water tower near Alliance Park and the CHS water tower um, up to 8th Avenue following our uh, that's a sunset trail that the Dodge County has there following 34 and uh, R 8th Avenue, which I guess is also uh, County Road. So just to give you a heads up that we're looking at maybe aligning some projects there. So be looking for uh, that when we meet in March. So just wanted to point that out because it was both mentioned. So um, engineer's report, uh, roundabout plannings in your council packet um, is a plan sheet for the 16th Street roundabout project, specifically the planting plan. Uh, staff, really Tim and I have been approached about uh, some community uh, group planning with uh, Janet Sinning. Um, so we did provide her uh, the planting plan to show her what was planned to be planted with the 16th Street roundabout. The Main Street uh, intersection there at the liquor store parking lot, we have a retaining wall, have a very similar planting. Um, actually the same species is going to be planted at that intersection to kind of spruce that corner up. Um, so we did talk about Casa 34 roundabout. There is no planting proposed in there. That's something that has been discussed at a staff level, so that may be something that's coming forward specifically to, there's some MnDOT funding uh, within their trunk highway um, where you can plant some fundings. We did it down by Subway and the towing company there. Um, so that might be something, and, th and that funding group really likes to donate a lot of a lot of the stuff to be planted and likes the community groups and public work staff to do the planting, so that might be something that's coming forward here in the coming years. So I think that was more just the FYI tonight that, that has been discussed. Uh, Spruce up our city, so it's great to see a you know, grassroots sort of level on what we can do and obviously coordinating at the best we can to leverage uh, our work to make things look nice. So um, I think that was just more of an FYI tonight. So that was about all I had. Perfect. Thank you. Any questions for Brandon? Okay. Um, on the correspondence, any questions on the correspondence? Hearing none, our next meeting is in two weeks, I believe on March 8th. So we'll see everybody then. Everybody drive safe on your way home and make it in your driveway. <laughs>
I'll move a make uh, uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion. Thanks, Ryan. Do I have a second? <laughs> I'll stand. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're opposed. Thank you. We're, we're, we're set it up. We're going home. <laughs> we're out of here. <laughs> right. We're opposed. No, we're, we're opposed. <laughs>